Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Welcome to GearFest 2021. It's our annual celebration of gear and music. And we have a special guest with us here today. This is Yvette Young from Covet. Great to see you again. Hi, always a pleasure being on your programs. Oh, thank you. We, uh, we did an interview back in January around NAM time and uh, it's nice to talk to you again. <laughs> So what have you been up to through the winter? I, I uh, saw you've got some tour dates coming up and I, I see you posting some music and things. Tell us a little bit about what's been happening. For me, I was just working full speed grinding, meeting due dates and deadlines uh, before everything shut down. And we had this whole like big headliner tour planned and just, that all just went out the window. So I took the time to just get a lot of rest <laughs> and to recharge my creative batteries. I feel like I was just working so hard. I never really had a chance to like acknowledge, you know, maybe even like my mental health. And then like, um, there was a lot of things that I wanted to do that I just never had time for. So I taught myself how to re do basic recording so that I could do demos myself and send them to my bandmates long distance. And that was a game changer. Like before, believe it or not, I was kind of just keeping everything up here and I had a bunch of crappy phone recordings, but now I'm able to use a DAW and do a little bit of lightweight producing. Um, I think a lot of people struggle with like, um, they don't want to start something because like me, they're a crazy perfectionist. So they don't want to put out maybe a subpar product and they don't want to like do a bad job, but everyone has to start making crappy recordings. You learn by by listening to your old recordings and figuring out things that you didn't like and trying to find ways to improve. So um, you have to be patient with yourself and that also requires a lot of time. And boy, have I had a lot of time. Right. <laughs> so yeah, that's been what I've been doing. And also I wrote a lot of um, the new album, which is, it's just so funny because we're doing a tour based off of music I released a year ago, but I'm already basically sitting on half of a new record. <laughs> wow. So I just, I can't wait to be able to play that new music and go record that. But first gotta, gotta do the tour for the last record. <laughs> right. Right. Well, that's, that's awesome. So has that, has the, the DAW and doing a little bit more polished demos maybe than, than what you would have done with your, your phone or a, a less sophisticated recording, if you will, has that changed the way you write? Has it changed the demos that you do for the rest of the band? I'm able to now plan out my effects a little better. Like before I used to mess around with effects and, uh, and record on my phone, but now I'm able to like change things around on the DAW. And let's, let's say I don't like a section. I can like punch that section in. Also like I can hear what it's like to swap the ordering of effects um, real time rather than have to like, again, unplug everything and, and A, B that in the matter of just dragging something around. So for me, that's been so efficient. And even if I'm not using um, the final product of what I hear on Guitar Rig, I can then take the what I've simulated on my computer and then try to replicate it with my pedals. And oftentimes um, I'm actually amazed at how close the outcome is <laughs> like it's just been really cool i think i've i've had to adapt i i admitted admittedly kind of a tech philistine so i just like always wanted to do things old fashioned if i could i would just have like a quill and parchment <laughs> to like write everything so what does that mean then when you have to take your songs on stage and you've got to design a pedal board that's where you can't necessarily rewire between songs and you're recreating those tones that you came up with on your your computer is has that affected how you're going to put together your pedal board and what you'll use? Definitely. The HX Stomp and the Helix have been just so powerful um, for me, again, learning on how I want to work with effects ordering. Um, with the HX Stomp, I think I'm interested in learning how, how to run stuff stereo for future gigs. And I've even been experimenting with like trying to split a signal so that so, like for like a distortion or a, a fuzz or something, like I want to preserve that clean signal um but also have uh one that's more affected and wet so that the blend is is there's still clarity in that right right you've talked about how you've you've been learning about technology and working on uh, recording skills and things have you also been spending time on your guitar playing and your composing i know you've been writing a lot but but are there things you do to try to to improve that and to uh, to get better i've been definitely just trying to finish a bunch of songs um, I've been doing a ton of riff demos. A lot of the newer stuff actually started out instead of me sitting down, um, being like, 
I'm going to write a song right now. They've been kind of just like little maybe rhythmic ideas I've had or even just like gear demos. Like I've been sent a bunch of pedals that I had to try out. And I find that pedals just make me write so differently sometimes depending on what comes out because I'm really paying attention to like what the tone is coming out of the pedal and I really want to showcase that. So I, I've been writing a lot differently thanks to effects. And um, I guess I actually spend most of my time sitting down just thinking of how I can extrapolate on certain riffs to flesh them out into full songs. Like my passion has always just been in composition, even though I feel like I do have like a toe in the virtuosic guitar world, which I'm like super grateful for. I always do feel like an outsider because at the end of the day, all my time goes into like, how can I write like a really compelling song and how can I uh, write something catchy um, and really sit there and compose something. Uh, when I'm um, learning a riff, I can never really play anything that I imagine first because it starts from in my head. I don't know how to play it yet. I don't really use shapes or anything because I'm in like so many different tunings all the time. So I end up just slowly arduously piecing together what I hear in my head, including all the different um, harmonies and all the little runs and stuff. And then I end up just sitting down with that for probably five hours and that equals practicing for me. Right. Right. Do you, do you notate all those parts or do you have a way to keep track of them? Because as you build up a, a library, if you will, or a body of work, you have to remember the older stuff and work on the new stuff and prepare it for the tour and things. How do you remember all of that? That's certainly a struggle. I will say the DAW has helped me a lot, um, keeping track of all my ideas. Uh, I Every time I write a riff, I make a video for it so I can remember where my hands were. Because on guitar, um, different than piano, there's like a bunch of ways to play different intervals and you can play a chord like four or five different ways. So it's just... If, if I were to just use my ear, I'd probably be lost. So having a video for reference is always super helpful. Um, right. It just takes the discipline to remember to do that every single time. Right, right. That's awesome. Well, would you, uh, could I ask you to uh, to kind of show us what you're talking about? Could you, uh, could you play a little bit for us and, and talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I always say that if you have a strong melody, that's all you need. Like every, if you have a strong melodic foundation, something that is, um, memorable, then I guess you have the basis for, you have potential for like a really awesome song. So yeah, this, I, I had this idea. I was just like, oh, it'd be so cool if um, it was maybe this sequence, like so simple, right? And so then I started thinking of ways to like play with the rhythm too, but I was like, okay, before I do anything with that, I have to go home and um, find it on guitar. So I guess uh, I, I'm i in an alternate tuning right now. I'm in F, A, C, G, C, E. Um, and I like alternate tunings because it's like a, a, a wash of pre-existing color that I can work with. And I feel like it makes it so that I can't use like conventional chord shapes. I'm not boxing myself in that way. And I find that sometimes I write things a lot different when I have just like a little bit of color to inspire me. And it also makes certain intervals more accessible to my hand, but I usually don't change stuff up until like I need to do something and then I figure it out from there. But yeah, I really like this tuning. I've been writing a lot of new music in this one. So I was like, all right, let's find that melody. Um, <clears throat> I like to use my voice primarily initially because I feel like you're writing the music that actually wants to be written rather than letting just your comfort and convenience on the instrument dictate what you're writing. Um, a lot of people say that they keep on writing the same thing, but I feel like you can fix that if you just totally get off your guitar and just like think of the melodies you want to write and then find them, which is what I'm about to do. So. Um, Found the notes, right? Your training is awesome. Recommend it for everyone. <laughs> Saves you a lot of time doing this kind of process. Now, the next step for me would be to kind of embellish the main melody a bit. So, ooh, that's, I already have that open string right there to like drone it, uh, be a drone underneath it. So. so there's that. So, um, now let's play with the rhythm a bit. So uh, I think it would be cool if it was like a dotted, right? So ba, 
it just kind of makes you go like this um <laughs> that's my goal and everything i write is i just kind of want to make people dance so i already kind of like extrapolated on the melody a little bit but there's that dotted feel the, the last stage where it was just <clears throat> Um, me singing the notes and then kind of just finding them on the fretboard, that's kind of like your your sketch, right? And so the next process in when you draw something after your sketch, you make decisions and you stick to them. So you take maybe like a liner pen and you go and draw the lines that you want and you erase the ones that you don't want and you like edit and you add detail. So this is that stage of the process for me. So maybe I would add something like little ornaments like and then a harmonic. I'm also being conscious of the root notes that I choose and I felt like instead of that root note it's such like a melancholy chord to me it sounds like longing so so kind of just added to that. So um, at this point, I have all of the root notes that I want and I added some harmonics just for like some shimmery chiminess. Um, I think texture a lot. So if I'm like in the lower register a lot and there's a lot of like sustained notes, maybe sometimes I want to tap something for some staccato-ness or maybe I want some harmonics so that there's just like a different color there, a different shape. I'm, I'm speaking very abstractly, but this is just like how my crazy process is. <laughs> And then, um, so I guess right now we have part A of, of a riff. Um, it's and then maybe I would add like So there's that. That of course took time, but you know, I kind of worked the same way I built, I, uh, I built this riff initially, which is by singing what I want to hear next. So I have um, part A. <laughs> a lot of the times when I'm writing, I think about the structure and what flows the best. To me, flow is so important. Um, and I find that also singing and using your voice helps with flow because you can't really sing something that's jarring or disjointed. It's hard. And I feel like things are more memorable when you can hum them. So uh, I feel like uh, maybe I can have A, one, and then have A come back again. But I'm going to vary it with that. So I changed the ending. Again, that took time for me to decide. Um, but to me, I wanted something that would segue into um, a part B. So A1, A2, and then I wanted something that would go up because the next part I want to like open and be big because right now it's very like noty and it's very like, you know, uh, <laughs> I need something that kind of sounds more washy and like I want something where you're floating. So I um, came up with, again, the process was singing. I was like, um, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is a bit crackly right now. No worries. Pretty hit, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so. So, to go into that, it would be, um. The channel there but yeah so that's pretty much my part a and part b and so the next part of my process now is i have my melodic skeleton 
I made all the decisions and I'm committed to them. Like a, a lot of my stuff isn't really improvisational. Maybe I will here and there live, but for the most part, I like to establish my notes to make my bandmates job a little easier. Um, so I have the skeleton now. Um, I like to call that like your black and white drawing. You've erased all the sketch lines. You have this like black framework now um, with all the details planned out. And now is your opportunity to, to add color. I mean, I view, every time I write a melody, I want to tell a story, right? It's, it, I guess it's like sonic storytelling. That's what I like to call it. Um, and so now I want to try to figure out some effects I can use to help that melody come to life. So I mentioned that uh, the first part, I kind of wanted to be like catchy. And to me, like, I really like the sound of chorus. It kind of makes things sound a bit warmer um, and lush. So let's add some chorus. Um, <laughs> I want to open up and uh, my favorite way to get things to open up and sound kind of like they're blooming is with a delay. So I'm going to tap in the tempo I want. probably repeat um and those are the sorts of decisions I would make I'm like how many times should this section come back is it boring yet um uh, one way I like to also vary up things is like I have um some parts where it's just I'm repeating for a long time like we mentioned earlier because I'm playing with a band sometimes I'm like okay I should just do the same thing for a really long time so they can be the variation but in addition to the variation that they generate um I try to keep things not stale by varying up the tone sometimes and, and thinking about things dynamically. So I'm not in the correct tuning, but sometimes I'll like have a part where I'm repeating and then I'll add some delay to it to make it sound like bigger. And then I'll add um, some distortion even or some, some gain just to like give it some extra bite and make it sound even more aggressive. And that's one way I think um, texturally and dynamically. Hmm. So yeah, that is my very long <laughs> explanation oh. on how I come up with riffs. That is awesome. So so now we have all your secrets and all of us can write amazing music. Yeah, honestly, it just starts <laughs> with a simple a simple melodic idea and then you just have to have the patience and, and dedication to really like sit and refine your idea and just do that for an entire song. Right, right. Well, that, that's awesome. It's really fascinating to watch your, your process and how you, you build on the ideas and, and create the music. That was, that was wonderful. Thank you very much for doing that. Of course. Thank you for watching me explain my weird, wacky world. No, that's that's, that's wonderful. We, we just so appreciate you taking the time with us today. And and like I said, I, that's just inspiring to watch you create. So I'm going to go home and try and write some songs now. Oh, hell yeah. Good luck <laughs> and Godspeed. Right, right on. Thank you. It was great to see you again. Yeah, likewise. I and, hope we get to do this again. Yeah, and I hope someday we can do it in person once we get things uh, opened back up a little bit more. And, and uh, we'd love to have you back out here to Sweetwater to uh, to do some of this for us as well. Definitely. It would be a pleasure. Right on. And you're you're going to be going out on tour later this year, correct? Yeah, uh, we have some stuff planned for around Octo September, October. Um, and with luck next year, maybe full U.S. headliner. We'll see. Fingers crossed. N nice. And, and of course, uh, you mentioned also you've been writing for uh, for another album coming up. And, uh, and so we'll be watching for that as well. So you've got lots going on. Yeah, the thing I showed you actually is going to make its way onto the next album, so you might hear a riff that you recognize. Right, a sneak preview of, of the next album. That's awesome. Well, thanks, <laughs> thanks so much for sitting down with us today. We're, we're just uh, thrilled that you were able to join us for GearFest 2021. It's been a real pleasure. Of course, the pleasure is mine. Thank you, and take care. You too. And thank you for joining me here at GearFest 2021. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Mm -hmm.